Hello, future architects! I am architect Jamie Lee Ann Abrahani Yapchula. Yes! That was actually the first time that I could finally address myself as an architect. In this vlog, I will be sharing with you 10 tips and tricks that I think would be helpful for you in preparation for the architecture licensure exam. So if you're new here to the channel, hi! I am architect Jamie and I actually documented my Ale review journey on this platform. So feel free to watch my other vlogs should you need a guide for requirements, filing, review study sessions, and a lot more. I hope you could subscribe to the channel to help it grow. Now let's proceed to the video. Tip number one, plan your review to maximize your time. Six months of review for me felt like it wasn't enough time because there was really a lot to cover in preparation for the exam. The advice I can give is to prepare ahead. Please check the website of PRC for a copy of the topics covered in the exam. You can then start to make a schedule of your own. When making a schedule, a lot days for backlogs. You can't avoid it. That is why it is important to a lot time for it so that you won't easily fall behind schedule. Tip number two. Choose a review center that is a good fit for you in terms of location, schedule, or budget. You can self-study for the exam, but I still recommend enrolling on a review center so that you'll have a guide. Because of the pandemic situation, my review was pure online classes. Itingnan mo ngayon yung paano mo makukuha yung setback, maghanap ka ng paraan, maghanap ka ng hint. The online setup depends on the review center. Some have all classes live, while some have half of the classes live and half of it pre-recorded, which can be accessed in a given time frame. The available review classes for ALE are the following. Number 1. Comprehensive Review A lecture-based class that covers all topics for Day 1 of ALE. History and Theory of Architecture Principles of Planning Architecture Practice Utility Systems Structural Conceptualization and Building Materials and Construction Number 2. Design Review a lecture-based class that covers architectural design and site planning for Day 2 of ALE. Number 3. Refresher Review A question-and-answer format class to practice review with to recall information. And number 4. Mock Board Exam and Coaching A simulation experience in preparation for the actual exam. Tip number 3. Look for a review or a study buddy. A review or study body is essential. Preparing for the ALE can become overwhelming especially if you're facing it alone. Try to look for someone who has similar goals to yours. When I reviewed for ALE, me and my friends weren't in the same review centers. We opted to choose differently. However, because of the growing online platforms amidst the pandemic, we discovered Discord. Through Discord, we opened a private server wherein each member was free to invite another friend. From just 5 members, our server grew to become a community of 30 plus smart, kind, and hardworking people from all over the country, connected by the same goal of passing the ALE. Everyone had the intention of helping one another through group study sessions and companionship. We're happy to share that all January 2022, Ale takers from our ATT study group successfully passed the exam. Tip number 4. Prepare enough budget for review expenses and exam requirements. The expense of reviewing accumulated throughout the months. It's better to be prepared with the budget prior to your review. Here is a record of my review expenses. The list excludes personal expenses such as food, snacks, stationery, and supplementary review materials. Tip number 5. Process your ALE requirements as soon as you can. During the review season, 
the pressure will tend to build up as the awaited day comes closer. The requirements cannot all be processed on the same day. That is why you must allot time for it. My TOR and its CTC got processed in 3 weeks. My NBI clearance earliest appointment date was in a month. The rest of my requirements also consumed time. It's better to have all this processed early on so that you can continue to focus on your review. Tip number 6. Set up a good study space for yourself. Initially, I thought I would be reviewing a lot on cafes. However, because of the pandemic, I stayed home. This means lesser expenses, but the challenge was finding a good spot. A good spot would be somewhere where you can think clearly and is away from distractions. Tip number 7. Do self-study. Even if you're enrolled in a review center, not everything can still be covered on the classes because of limited time. Sometimes, you have to dig deeper and research for yourself. Also, some review centers have available printed review modules and or handouts. If you do not have these materials, the next choice would be is to rely on good reference books. I'll be doing a separate vlog for the books that I used for my study. Tip number 8. Balance your study schedule. Everyone has a different daily schedule. Some are working and reviewing at the same time. Some are focused on review. I got to experience both. If you're just at home and it is hard to just start and end the day doing nothing else but study, it can become monotonous and you'll eventually either be discouraged or burned out. Instead, Remember to take breaks in between study sessions. On the other hand, if you're working and reviewing at the same time, maximize the opportunity when you can study, like lunch breaks or when you're commuting. Either way, at the end of the day, it's not about how long you tried to study, but the quality and productivity of that study. On average, I was able to record 4 hours and 20 minutes of productive study per day for a span of 4 months. This productive study excluded meal times, phone distractions, and anything else unrelated to simply studying. Tip number 9. Organize your notes. Note-taking is essential. It enables your mind to register information much better because of writing and analyzing it. There are many ways you can do note-taking. You can do it digitally so that you can carry it wherever you go. You can write it on notebooks. You can print and place it on clear books. You can also post it on your wall. I did a bit of everything mentioned, but majority of my notes were on my bedroom walls. The reason behind this is simply because it gave me a clearer picture of what I've already covered and what I still needed to cover. The only disadvantage was that some notes were harder to reach visually. From my review, my notes were a lifesaver. In the last month, I was no longer taking in new information. Instead, I just went over my notes multiple times. Tip number 10. Prepare for your best fight when you take 
the exam. The exam is not easy. You really need to give a 100% effort when you take it. It is like going into a battle because you cannot predict what will come out on the exam, but you can prepare for it. From my experience of taking it, only about 30 to 40 percent of what I studied came out on the exam. 60 to 70 percent were application from the two years mandatory diversified architectural experience, which is why visiting hardwares, construction sites, and having design or professional practice exposure is also very important. And that completes my 10 tips and tricks for the architecture licensure exam. I hope it helps you out future architects. And also, congratulations again to the January 2022 ALA takers who passed the exam. And for the others, never give up. You too will become an architect in God's perfect timing. So, good luck and God bless to us, future architects and architects of 2022. Fighting!